G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, I'm going to be showing you how I filter all these aquariums, 20 aquariums with one filter. And that is because I use a sump. So let's get straight into the video and I'll show you all about it. So this is my sump. The first chamber here contains my mechanical filtration. So it's just layers of sponge all the way down to the bottom. So water flows in from the tanks down to here. Then it comes up here, up this bubble trap, and then flows into this second chamber. This second chamber is filled with biological filtration. So we've got uh, pumice type stone. This is actually Sika matrix. We then got lava rock. This is two types of lava rock here. And then we've got some hydroponic beads to growing, for, for growing plants in water. And I actually find that these hydroponic beads are fantastic for sumps. Very, very porous, very, very lightweight, a lot of surface area in these hydroponic beads. And then also in this chamber, we've got my pothos plant. And hopefully you can see on the screen here, it is a little bit hard to film the sump without getting too many reflections on this glass. But you can hopefully see the roots that have been growing from my pothos plant through this media. Pothos plant helps with nutrient export, getting out that nitrate out of the water, using it to grow its leaves. I'm going to be taking some cuttings off this pothos plant soon and planting them in other aquariums so I have more pothos plant taking up even more nutrients. Now, so like I said, the water flows back up this bubble trap into this second chamber, then down through the porous material and then up this second bubble trap and then into the main part of the sump. In this sump, I've got two Eheim Jaeger heaters, both running at 300 watts each. They hardly ever turn on, they're just there for backup if the air conditioning wants to fail in my fish room. Also in the sump on this side here, we have two DCP 15,000 uh, litre per hour pumps made by Gboa and uh, I can control them basically to the wattage uh, with their microcontrollers that are up on, uh, that are bolted to the fish tank stands. Also. I don't, know, I don't, don't want to get too much into the plumbing in this video. Just where the connection comes from the return pumps into the plumbing, I have two check valves. The check valves prevent water backflowing into the sump and potentially overflowing the sump if there ever was to be a power outage. That's just a safeguard. So those two thick pieces of PVC there are the check valves. Power cuts, water does not flow back into the system from the plumbing. It only flows from the drain lines, not from the return lines. Now, I'm going to show you what the sump looks like when the power is turned off and how much the water level goes up to. And um, when I'm doing water changes, I, can basic, I basically fill to the top of this piece of electrical tape here, but I can pretty much fill it to about here and still the, this sump will not overflow if there was a power outage. The main thing with the sump is you want to make sure it can hold enough water if there is a power outage to make sure it will not uh, overflow. If we've got 20 tanks in this system, power turns off, there's a lot of water in the plumbing, that's all gonna drain away until the water level in the fish tanks drains below the bulkheads and into the sump. Now I thought I'd just show you what the sump looks like when it's off. So if there was a power outage, this is currently what my water level would go to. See there's quite some height left uh, if, this, if the power was to cut out this sump will not overflow. Like all filtration systems, sumps also require maintenance. Now, you might not be able to see it too well on camera, but the water level on this first chamber, where this mechanical filtration is, is right up to the top, and it's actually overflowing into the second chamber, where my biological filtration is. So that means that the sponges that provide mechanical filtration are clogged up. Water doesn't have enough time to flow through these sponges and up through this bubble trap and into the uh, biological filtration side. It's just simply overflowing the, the, this section of the sump and going straight into the biological side. Now, as you can see, the biological side is fine. Water will still, still has to flow through all this section of biological media and then up the bubble trap and then back into the pump area of the sump. But in this first chamber, it's simply overflowing and going into the second chamber. So what I'm gonna do now is clean some of these sponges. I'm not gonna clean them all. Also, I'm gonna use water change water to clean the sponges in. I'm gonna show you what that's like. 
So the first thing I need to do is remove this pothos plant that you see at the top here. It's growing in this part of the chamber. Uh, I'm going to move that out of the way to shift it basically to the side. And then I'm going to take these uh, PVC pipes off and then pull the sponges out and clean them. So what I'm going to do now is fill two of these tubs up with tank water and then rinse the sponges in these tubs using tank water so you don't kill the beneficial bacteria that is in that sponge. If I was to use tap water, the chlorine and chloramine could kill the beneficial bacteria that is built up in those sponges. So I'm doing water changes on the tanks as I do this. I'm just got a spare hose to bypass some of the water change water. So the benefit with using these drums is that they have wheels on them. So it is fairly easy to move these around even when they're pretty full of water. They're quite heavy at the moment, but you can still lift them. Um, but I'm not gonna have to lift these out of the fish room where to dump the dirty water. I'm just gonna simply continue the siphon, siphon out the dirty water into the garden. It benefits the garden and the lawn. So what I'm gonna do now is start filling up the second drum. That's why these little clamps are really handy to have. So I've only got, I've got four clamps, but I wanna get more uh, so I can do more things simultaneously in the fish room, make the running of the fish room a bit more efficient. Anyway, I'll just finish filling this up. And now I'm gonna show you how I get the sponges out of the sump. Now I'm gonna move this pothos plant as far out of the way as possible. The next thing I'm gonna do is turn flow off to the sump and that's going to slow the splashing of water in the sump down. So actually turning both return pumps off from the mains. Next thing I do, and this is where water is going to start flowing out a little bit, is take these little attachments off. Now you can hear the splashing. That would be a lot louder if I didn't have these attachments going into the sump. The second one I take off is the one at the back here, just a little twist. So as you can see, they're not glued to this PVC, just so I can maintain the sump. So this water will stop flowing soon as uh, water completely drains out of all the overflows in the tanks. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is again, try and move this pothos plant out of the way without snapping it. Now I've got a lot of different little sponges in here that uh, I just use to host beneficial bacteria, like these little offcuts. I'm gonna move them to the side into the second chamber. I also keep my little double-headed sponge filters in here so they uh, can keep beneficial bacteria seeded in them. The next thing I'm gonna do is pull a section of sponge out and put it straight in this container. Now, I'm obviously dirtying the water up in this chamber, but the water can't flow into this second chamber because I stopped flow to the sump. All the dirty water that will be in this chamber here is gonna stay in this chamber until I clean all the sponges out. So there's no risk of getting any of this dirty water into all the tanks in the system. Now you can see this section of sponges is made up of some smaller section of sponge. The deeper I go down into this portion of the sump, the larger the sections of of sponge there are. So I have here, the, the, these layers of sponge go the full length of width of the sump. Just start to wring them out in this water. So I'm just trying to break up all the, all the feces that's in this water. As I do that, I'm gonna put it into the next drum. So I'm gonna have to do this several times as I clean these out. Try and get them as clean as possible. They're not gonna be perfect, but they don't have to be. Just have to get the larger particles out of these and then pop them back in the sump. Okay, so into the next chamber. Almost as bad as the other one. So what I'm gonna do now is drain these out and then fill them back up with tank water and continue to clean these sponges until they're relatively clear. So it's gonna take quite some time to do all that, but I won't bore you with that. I've put all the sponges back in the sump, in this portion of the sump here. I've rinsed them as best as I can. And I've left two uh, in there that I didn't rinse. So the last two I didn't rinse. Yeah, you can see the water's a bit murky up here. I've rinsed them as best as I can. It took four or five rinses with aquarium water to get them as clean as I could and put them back in the sump. So yeah, you can see there is some residue there, but that's all gonna get filtered as uh, I turn on the return pumps. So 
They're in feed mode now at the moment, the return pumps. So I'm just gonna get them out of feed mode and you'll hear water start to flow through the system. And you'll see the water levels drop. Now this water level won't drop too far because this is gonna start to fill up with water. But this water level should drop further. Hopefully I've cleaned the sponges well enough that the water won't overflow into this section from here. The, hopefully the water level will stay below this glass and water will get completely filtered through all these layers of sponges. Go up this bubble trap and then come into the biological filtration part of my sump. Now you can see bubbles starting to come out now from this drain line. This drain line comes from the top row of tanks and hopefully this water level doesn't come up too much as water starts to flow into this chamber. So far so good. So remember, before I clean these sponges, water was flowing over this and that's not meant to happen. That meant that the sponges here were pretty much blocked up and needed a good clean. So the water level in the sump has to get to this point here, top of this piece of electrical tape. And right now, it's up here. So what's gonna happen is, the flow rate in this chamber hasn't hit full peak yet. So this amount of water is remaining in the sump that needs to fill up all the tanks in the system. And once it gets to this point, pretty much that means this, these drain lines are going full boil as fast as they are, that, that, that they would go. And uh, that will give me an indication of how well I've cleaned the sponges. And hopefully it won't get too much higher than that. The water seems to be going all the way through all the sponges, all the layers of sponges up the bubble trap and then spilling over into the biological filtration side of the sump. It's not bypassing this bubble trap like before where it was bypassing and just spilling straight over, not going through the sponges. These drain lines are now operating at their maximum rate. Uh, they won't go any faster and I know I've cleaned the sponges well enough now. If I didn't clean these sponges well enough, this water level will be higher because they'll be blocking water f flowing down into this chamber and they would, it would eventually obviously spill over. But I must have cleaned them well enough because the water is remaining below the top of the glass here. So there you go, clean well enough. And I thought I should point out some of the benefits of why you would want to run a sump system for your fish room. One of the first things is ease of maintenance. I don't have to change water out of every single tank every week. I just have to, if I really need to, drain water out of one or two tanks and then uh, top those two tanks back up and then that water will dilute throughout the entire system. So very, very simple way of maintaining a lot of tanks. The other is efficiency with power. You don't have to heat individual tanks. You don't have to filter individual tanks. So again, I've just got two return pumps that filter every single tank and the room is heated. Obviously you don't need a sump to heat multiple aquariums, but I have two heaters in the sump as a backup if the aircon wants to fail. I don't need 20 heaters in the fish room to heat all the aquariums in case of a failure with the air conditioning unit. However, the main most important thing that I find with running a sump system is that I have very, very stable water parameters. Because of the large volume of water, all the tanks are connected. I have over 2000 liters of water in these aquariums. So I don't get variations in water chemistry, say with pH, alkalinity and hardness. Uh, I don't get uh, temperature swings. Some of these fish are sensitive to temperature swings such as the calvus. Uh, they're more sensitive to uh, water parameter swings than the other Tanganyika and cichlids I have in my system. But because of the large volume of water, very, very stable water parameters than having individual tanks set up with heaters and, and filters. The other benefit of having 
all the tanks connected is when I move fry from one tank into from the parents tank into a grout tank I can just net them and put them straight in the water chemistry is exactly the same throughout the entire system so that is why I run a sump system basically for water chemistry stability as well as the added benefit of not having to clean water out of every single tank it makes water changes a whole lot easier I know I'm a lazy person when it comes to water changes and maintenance of a fish room, and that's why I set up this rack the way it is. I just know what I'm like. I will get lazy with water changes if I had to do every single tank individually every week. I just would end up getting sick of it and not doing it, and then the fish would suffer. So that is one of the big reasons, and again, the other big reason was the uh, stability of the water parameters. Now, there are some disadvantages or cons, I would say, in running a system like this off a sump, and that is fish diseases. Diseases with fish can transfer through a system like this very, very easily and very, very quickly because every single tank is connected. Now again, you could have individual tanks in a fish room and still spread disease from one tank to another. If you'd say forgot to rinse a net out uh, from a sick tank and put that net into a other tank, doing water changes, hoses, um, not cleaning the hoses after a water change that you've been doing on a, on a sick tank and then using those water, those water change hoses on a, on a tank that's in this system or on an individual tank that doesn't have sick fish in it, you can cross contaminate that way as well. Whether you've got a system like mine which is plumbed up all together or running individual tanks, if you run a fish room with individual tanks and you get sick fish in that tank, you have to still be very, very cautious. You can't lower your guard with um, isolating that tank from the rest of your fish tanks. Put your hand in that tank, you've got water on your hand, you go to another tank, you could spread the disease throughout your fish room even though those tanks aren't physically connected like mine are. Anyway, I thought I should point out some of the pros and cons of having a system set up like mine where it runs off a sump. Now I'm sure some of you guys out there also have pros and cons for running a system like this or for not running a system like this. So why don't you share your comments in the comment section below. So there you have it guys, how I run all 20 aquariums on this side of my fish room off one filter. I really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.